No Further Information, a podcast for cops and ice cream salesmen. I'm going to introduce legislation that would make it illegal for anyone to take more than five samples of ice cream. This isn't a goddamn charity. You know you're going to get chunky monkey anyway. This episode will be focused on cops. Today's guest will blow you away. He also reaffirms my plan to turn this into a completely Asian-based podcast. That might limit the number of episodes, however. Any cops from Asia want to be on? Then again, I don't want to compete with the dozens and dozens of Asian cop podcasts out there. I can barely get enough listeners myself. Apologies in advance because we talk less about police stories and a lot more about origins, faith, and dedication with today's speaker. He's charming and humble, but he sounds like he should be an Asian farmer. Apparently they do exist. Uh, That's called a callback, kids. Let's hear from Officer Bob, a fortunate son, who is a much better human than I am. I think I've finally found an Asian guy who's cooler than me. (laughs) I'm just kidding. That's impossible. Hi, I'm Officer Bob. I'm a police officer here in the state of Texas. How long have you been on the job? Oh, a little over three years now, give or take. Same department? Yes, sir. And uh, I think uh, a little birdie told me that you were in the military too, right? Yes, sir, I was. I want to hit on uh, an interesting phenomenon. I don't think I've had many veterans on before do the skills in the military transfer to law enforcement transfer to the street well i will say yes and no um the big one is of course life experience Mm -hmm. Uh, you get that a lot more than the average uh, kid that comes out of college Mm -hmm. Uh, and definitely uh you learn a lot of good skill sets that are transferable i will say especially when it comes to marksmanship um, right. when it comes to command presence, right. discipline, stuff like that. Right. Um, however, there are times where, I mean, we have younger officers that, when I mean younger, um, I served for a very long time. I started as a cop when I was 30, not a 22, 23-year-old kid. Right. Um, so, Like some know, other assholes. Right, right. <laughs> Especially a lot of vets who just come straight out. Right. And, and uh, they'll come in with a little more, I would say, uh, military presence, but not in a good way. Where it's more, you're going to listen to me, I'm the drill sergeant here. I'm the drill instructor here. Which doesn't always work on the street. Absolutely not, no, sir. And so do the military folks, um, are they taken aback when the AP or the suspect are like, man, fuck you, I'm not listening to you. Right. We're we're used to, obviously, command structure. Um, Obviously, uh, when you have some kind of rank, your rank tells you or tells everyone a lot about not just your experience, but the fact that you earned it. So when you go around speaking to people who are, I guess, of lesser rank than you, right. um, you expect them to know and, and immediately respond and obey. Out in the streets, as you know, there is uh, nobody, <laughs> nobody gives nobody a damn. Gives a fuck. And I always tell that to my buddies when they get out of the service. Nobody gives a damn about what, right. what ribbons you had on your chest or what kind of rank you had. Um, and you got to find ways around it. And some of them, I, I will, yes, sir. Uh, there, are, I've come across a lot of young officers who are veterans who. They were they were respected to a certain degree. Right. Um, we had a sergeant major in the Marines, and mm-hmm. we always called him sergeant or major, you know, and, and we respected him. He, he was also, you know, fucking goddamn six foot six and just a brick <laughs> right. shit house. But then at the same time, I worked with a uh, first sergeant in the army. I think mm-hmm. he was, and he'd get on the street with his, you know, frosted tips. Yeah, yeah, and 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 he was almost taken aback. When people, A, didn't listen to him, B, ran, or C, when somebody like me, just the PO, which, and so it's funny, right? Because I had more seniority than him. We were both patrolmen, both same rank, but, you know, he's he's the top, right? And and here I come, I'm like, that's not how you do an SFST. So it, it almost, like, threw him off. Mm-hmm. Do, do, you, do you find that to be accurate, like, in your experience with vets? Uh, I, I would like to think... That I'm not, uh, but I have, so, and, and again, I have uh, yet somebody tell me that I have been that way, uh, right. and I always try to approach things with the most, most humility as I can, um, but I, I have experience and seen officers who, again, who are in the service who, hey, do this, and, they, and they'll say straight out, no, fuck you, and right. now they go, what tools would I have, right. do I have, I can go hands-on, or I could use 
or I would say sometimes abuse the law, uh-huh. whether it be right or wrong, uh-huh. um, and it just goes ugly. Uh-huh. Have you only ever been a cop here in Texas? Yes, sir. Okay. Are you originally from Texas? No, sir. Oh, okay. I think Cali, right? Well, you, uh, well did, I, I call it the uh, Communist Republic of the, com- Communist <laughs> yes, Republic of yes, the West Coast. Right. Okay. And then uh, how, you seem to have, uh, so, you know, obviously this is not a visual podcast. People can't see, but my guest came in today, cowboy hat, you know, the tight jeans and the tight boots, uh, just the complete antithesis of me. And I got to say, I'm a little jealous. I'm a little, it's working for you. You seem to have acculturated to the Southern to the Southern lifestyle a little bit. Would you, is that fair? Well, yes, sir. I mean, I grew up, I mean, I don't know how far back we can go as far as family history. Oh, baby. That's, <laughs> that's what this place is for. Right. Yeah. Uh, we, well, my, we're, oh, we're all kids of immigrants, everyone in this room, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. And so uh, you're not originally from the South, right? Yeah, well, I'm right. actually am. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm originally from, uh, my family is originally from uh, the Southern Peninsula of Korea. Right. Well, <laughs> he fucking, he got me. He got me. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. my, uh, my family grew up watching uh, a lot of Westerns and old sure. American classics due to the fact that after the uh, communists invaded, right. uh, the only type of media that they were able to obtain was from the GI bases. Mm-hmm. And a lot of that was old John Wayne Westerns and stuff like that. And I, so I grew up listening to the old country music and watching the old uh, country classics. So. You were born there? Yes, sir. Okay. And when did you guys come over? Well, I came here when I was a uh, ripe old age of one. One. Okay. Yes, sir. And uh, what was life like growing up here? I mean, you had some Western culture, but now you're living it. Was it what you expected? Was it different? Was it the same? Racism? What do you mean that in respiratory? Well, I mean, compared to California and Texas or? America. America. So, you know, you're in South Korea, and I know you're fucking one, but, you know, you're, you're in South Korea. Your family's like, Oh, they have this perception of Western culture. Then they actually come here. Was it, you know, did it live up to their expectations? Well, when my, when my family first uh, immigrated to this country, um, California was a different state. Right. It was ran fairly yeah. well. Right, right. Um, and my family it really adopted the American dream. That's starting, good. Starting businesses and whatnot. And uh-huh. uh, that's deteriorated over the years. I always wanted to go to Texas since I was knee high, uh-huh. just because I always identified with that. Texas mindset, mm-hmm. the individual, leave me alone, let me do my thing, F the federal government, that kind of mentality. Um, and sure enough, uh, as soon as I was able to, uh, I got my ass over here real quick. Or is your family still back there? I have uh, just my mother. She was uh, my... taking care of my Mima at the time, and uh, the rest of my family spread right across the country. Okay, so, um, you know, I sometimes when it comes to uh, uh, Asian cops coming here, um, you know, we experience a little bit of discrimination, but I think you have two things working for you. Number one, you were in the military. And number two, you've kind of acculturated a little bit. You like this culture. Did you still experience racism or discrimination on the job, on the street as a cop? As a cop, uh, I mean, uh, shoot, as you're a kid growing up, you're always going to get messed with a little bit. Oh, um, shit. But I think that's just, you just, you know, like the old American spirit, just shut the fuck up and get with it, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, in Texas... I wouldn't say that I've experienced blatant racism too much. Um, people will be surprised that it's not just white people who can be racist. Uh, man, I've gotten it from all different races. Yeah. I, mean, hell, I remember I was on a, a call and this lady kept calling me Jackie Chan. And I was like, okay, it's a black old lady too. <laughs> and I was like, man, I'm not Jackie Chan, but I'm, am I more handsome than him? And she said, no. I was like, yeah. okay. Yeah. But um, I, I, I think people respect the badge, especially where I work for the mm-hmm. most part. Um, I mean, you're always going to get the shitheads once in a while, depending sure. Where you're at, um, but overall, I would say not too much. Um, I'm sure out somewhere on Hodunk Town, more east or more west or south, right. I probably experienced a little bit. But I, I mean, hell, I got from everybody. You know, I've been called Chino cops by right. by Hispanics. You know, I've been called this and that by everybody. This is uh, allow me to complain here for a second. Yes, sir. All of these other Asian nationalities, you guys all get lumped into Chino <laughs> Chinese. Yes, sir. That's some old bullshit. All right. All right, I never get mistaken for Vietnamese or Korean, okay? So you guys are acculturating my Chinese heritage, and that's some old bullshit. We're going to take this back. Come on, Chinese people, rise up. We're taking it back. No. <laughs> well, <laughs> my granddad did fight the Chinese in the Korean War, so maybe that's, there's that. That's right. 
And, you know, with all due respect to your grandfather, I'm sure while he was over there, you know what I'm saying? He was like, oh, uh, Ming, Ming Bi, how you doing? <laughs> you know, like, like you ever had bulgogi? You know, like, Some good stuff. Uh, yeah. That's like, okay. <clears throat> um, what do you, what would you say is your forte on the job? You seem like a tack bro. Are you, you tack bro? Are you, are you a tack bro? <laughs> do you sleep in 511s? Uh, actually, I just got my first pair of 511s this year. Just because. What? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, huh? Um, he's like, and they're so comfortable. Yeah. They are extremely comfortable. Yeah. I don't know. I always see them, and I see them boys, especially where I live, walking around in them. Uh-huh. I'm like, look at those douchebags. And then yeah. I got a pair. And then you I'm got like, a pair. Yeah, that's good stuff. Right. Um, yeah. I, I, uh, I think my forte is a uh, very empathetic and sympathetic to people. Uh, I grew up, despite the modern or the misconception of the model minority, uh, my life was pretty jacked up growing up, like a lot of people. Um, and uh, my daddy's been to jail. He, you know, my mm-hmm. my folks used to beat my mom in front of me mm-hmm. and my my little brother, and he was a huge alcoholic, and it it, it definitely um, had me grow up real quick. And I think my forte is that I can take some of that experience and um, be empathetic and sympathetic to people who are experienced in family violence, alcoholism, you know, drug use, stuff like that. And I I always tell people on the job. Before I'm a cop, I'm a God-fearing man, and that's it. And I'm going to treat everybody like they're God's kids, mm-hmm. regardless of what you look like, mm-hmm. uh, until you give me a reason not to. Um, let's, man, let's go over all of that. Um, before we get into the street, can you explain to our listeners, we all know what the mi- model minority is thing. Can you explain to our listeners what that what that is? Absolutely. Uh, before I continue, am I talking too fast, or am I good? You talk, you, <laughs> baby. I'm the one who talks too fast. Okay, you're talking slow for me. Okay. So, so I'm right. And here's the thing: I tell everybody, pretend nobody's listening. You know, it's just the three, three. When he doesn't fucking count, right? So I'm pointing mm-hmm. at my producer. So you're you're perfectly fine. Thanks, but t- tell us what model minority is, because we all we all experienced it growing up. Well, there's a misconception that uh, I mean, I would say it's an earned misconception. Sure. A lot of sure. uh, a lot of Asian families when they come to this country. They come with a very traditional conservative background of family, tight-knit family structure. Uh, you got, generally speaking, uh, well-educated, um, and when they come to, and, you know, belief in the law, so right. when they come here, uh, I could just only speak on their Korean-American experience. Uh, uh-huh. They came here, and they put, pulled themselves up by the bootstraps and got a business started and sent their kids to decently good schools, hopefully. Um, I was a little shithead, don't get me wrong, but um, the, the model minority comes from that. It's just success which is odd they, could you, they uh, that all asians are successful, are successful and, smart. and that the parents are you know in family guy right like you doctor yet you know yeah, yeah, dad yeah, exactly. i'm i'm five you know <laughs> call me when you talk to you know and so that's the mom you know that yes, all asians have super smart kids and we're all studious and all uh, pe- jokes we, on all, them. we all play violin yes, and you know <laughs> and and so and so and yeah and we all know karate my, my producer made a karate move and so so um uh, uh, I'm going I'm to call them white people. All right. Just as a generalization, yeah, sure. white people go, uh, well, I mean, yeah, that's, that's, but it's a good, that's a good generalization. That's good prejudice. And can you explain why it's still a, a, a nefarious, you know, a nefarious form of discrimination, a nefarious form of prejudice? I mean, it's, it's, I think it's, immature and naive to believe that everybody has a shared experience just by what they look no like. No shit. Right. Yeah. I mean, how many fucking dozens of a- Asian uh, 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 countries are there? And it holds us to a standard, right? It's a real high standard. Oh, yes, you're, you, oh, <laughs> you one of the bad Asians, right? Right. You, you, you're not fucking, like, like, we've been through trauma. We've been through, we've been through fights. We've, we've, we've gotten into our fair shit. We, we all have different experiences. Yes, so the, this whole thing of like, that, that's why the model minority mythos is so uh, harmful to Asians. And and to be frank, it, it is, I would say, generally speaking, it is quite earned. Sure. A lot of Asians do great in this country. Yeah, no shit. Because yeah. Yeah, right. they bust yeah. their fucking ass. And then you have some families like, I mean, not maybe not yours, but like ours, who like, yeah, the parents are fuck-ups. And then we kind of became fuck-ups. A little bit, yes, sir. You, you know what I'm saying? I'm, then, I'm terrible at math. It's yeah, no shit. Funny. Oh, God. And, you know, my penis, like, normal size. I mean, I know shit. Well, no. that, I got kind of screwed yeah, up. Yeah, I know. Yeah, <laughs> Look, yeah, you, yeah, know, yeah. Well, you fucking take some, you fucking lose some. <laughs> you know, and, 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 and but, but we, you right. know, and I'm not putting myself on your plan, on your on your level, but, you know, we, despite these challenges, because we had fucking challenges, surprise, we pulled ourselves up by the bootstraps and we kind of got our shit together. So that's why that, that myth is so harmful to Asians. Yes, what, do, what do you think? Uh, I mean, absolutely. Uh, I think uh, 
I mean, I mean, every, any minority group, whether we go back to the Irish, you know, you're going to go through some kind of level of no discrimination shit. and stereotype. Yeah, no shit. But, you know, that's the beauty about the American dream. It don't matter. You just, you can be successful and who cares what anybody says about you. Yeah. So, uh, rolling on to ba- kind of going back to the, to the heading of, um, you know, you're empathetic. You talk to people. How does that apply in, in police work? You talked about your, your faith is obviously very important to you. This is coming from an, a, an atheist agnostic you know i'm definitely going to hell kind of you both of you are going to be laughing at me from the gates of hell you going? <laughs> i'm pointing at my producer you gonna visit me uh, he, he gave me like a, eh. uh, but how does that inform your day-to-day interactions as far as my faith goes yeah yeah your faith your commitment to people the ability mm-hmm. to talk the ability to empathize oh again uh you know my faith don't get me wrong i am not the model christian neither um we, we all struggle. And right. in, the, in the scriptures, it says that we are all doomed uh-huh. and we're all subject to, uh, to God's judgment. Um, it teaches, and the, the Bible teaches grace, uh, forgiveness. It teaches love. Um, doesn't mean, I mean, that old adage, you know, hate the sin, but love the sinner. I try to live by that no mm-hmm. matter what. Mm-hmm. Um, and when, no matter what, when somebody starts yelling or jabbing at me, um, it's, it's okay to me because in the end, I know who my maker is. I know who's the final judgment. And uh, the good Lord said, try to be, you know, loving to everybody. So I try. I fail sometimes. Don't get me wrong, but I try. That's the that's like the ultimate um, ace up your sleeve. I mean, I can say whatever I want to you and, and call you whatever I want. But you know, like I am I know I'm distilling religion down to this. You know, but like I'm, I'm good with my my, mm-hmm. my faith. God, I, I wish I had that. I'm just going like, to rot in the ground and be worm food. But you know, well, it's not yeah. too late, sir. Yeah. <laughs> but I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna push that on you. Uh, no further information. A podcast <laughs> for cops and Christians. Uh, okay, so um, when you are on the on the scene and you're dealing with people, so let's say either uh, I'll give you two scenarios: a victim and then a guy who's just motherfucking you up and down, mm-hmm. left and right. You are not judgmental. You can, I think you said, look at the sins, not the sinner, or judge the sins, not the sinner, and you can like kind of navigate those waters. Better than, than than most, maybe. Again, uh, I, I try. Not uh, as robot. Not maybe not yes, as robotic. I mean, every situation is different. Um, little, uh, more empathetic. I, yeah. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Yeah. Because um, I come from this. Back, I mean, I had the police call on my daddy too, and I saw him pulled away in cuffs. Yeah. And I, and the odd thing was, I was actually relieved when he finally got taken away. Good. And the police officer there. Um, this is one of my my first interaction that I remember with the cop was uh, he saw what happened, and uh, he told my mother. Um, I've never seen this with Koreans. I thought Koreans were like squared away. And the police officer actually took me to get some ice cream after uh, seeing, you know, or after that incident occurred. And my mama, she was beat to hell. Brother was crying. And that that small act of kindness, um, and I never got that officer's name. Mm. And he, he was an older white male with a mustache. I remember mm. that, like a standard police issue mustache. Right. Um, and uh, that, where's that was, yours? <laughs> uh, unfortunately, the good Lord didn't give me the good genes for a mustache. Motherfucker's been growing this since he got on. He got his <laughs> fucking shield, and you know. I got enough hair on yeah, other places. Right. Like, yeah, that, well, that, why can't you transfer it over? That, isn't that nature's <laughs> cruelest joke? This is, you know what? With all due respect, this is how I know there's no fucking god, right? Because you got all these pu- you got all these pubes, right? And you got no fucking hair up top. But we save money on razors, though. Yeah, I'll say yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if I could just now, I'm picturing myself with a bunch of face full of fucking pube hair, you know, <laughs> like a little curlies dangling from my fucking upper lip. Yes, sir. Yeah, that, uh, and so uh, so he does. I, and I had a similar story. Follow his piece of shit. Beat my mother. Uh, cop intervene. Good N- NYPD. I'm from New York. But uh, hell yes. Have you? Uh, <laughs> if you couldn't tell, and. Have you had a chance to? I, I waited for the opportunity, mm-hmm. uh, Bob, to recreate that on the street. Have you had a chance to recreate that for someone else, <sighs> or, or the, clo- uh, it, the closest that you got? It happens often, yeah. um, more than I thought I would. I, you know, again, I came into this job at a little later in life, um, mm-hmm. so it, it wasn't all about chasing bad guys and right. throwing the cuffs on people. Because um, you've seen your action, right? You, so you I, I kind of expected. Um, those type of interactions that happen more than not. And I shoot, I'm trying to think so many times where I've actually sat with people and they're there. She's a woman or is beat up to hell and, uh-huh. and she's crying. Kids are crying. And I said, ma'am, is, is it okay if I pray with you? If you, if you don't mind. And absolutely. They, they most, most of the time they'll, they'll say yes. Yeah. And we pray together or I'll give them a hug, you know, and, yeah. and uh, just tell them that, you know, you can always call this card at any time and you mm-hmm. can ask for me at any mm-hmm. time you like. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I'll talk with you. I have no issues with it whatsoever. Um, and yeah, I mean, I 
it, it happens uh, quite frequently where I, I mean I can't think of anything specific right now but there's definitely a well let me try to jog your memory right so you have two circumstances right one where the AP was on scene and you have enough probable cause hook him up clickety clack get in the mm-hmm. back and then now you're still on scene talking to her versus AP's fled you got to cut a warrant and, and, and get him at large uh, I think in those two situations like you're uh, reassuring the uh, victim in different ways. Here, you're saying he's in jail. We're protecting you, and then how she, he, he or she, whatever the victim happens to be, reacts. Versus, I'm scared for my life. He's still out there, or she's still out there, where whoever the suspect is. And I got you. Don't worry. Uh, the city of Left Elbow. We're, we're going to protect you. And when you have those two circumstances. You know, how much of you being there can you insert, you know, how much of you inserting yourself into their lives can, can you bring reassurance? How, how much reassurance can you bring them? Well, unfortunately, a lot of times um, the people that we come across with, they're habitual. It's going to be, it's, it's a constant situation where things escalate. Mm-hmm. And I cannot honestly say that I feel like I've made a huge difference in some of these folks because, uh, you know, you'll tell a lady, hey, this guy's, he's going to eventually hurt you like, real bad. Signs an affidavit for no, you know, no, no prosecution, you know, or you, you tell her, hey, you got to get your kids out of this situation or else it's going to get worse. And, and she'll say, yeah, you're right. You're right. And, and then one month and later, then, she right. could get called out again. And Same I, house, it, same suspect. So I try. I really do try uh, to speak to them. And I even am a married man. So I try to tell, hey, I'm a married man, too. And I will never touch my wife that way ever unless she asks for it, you know, in a, yeah. in a different, in a different, in a different, in a different right. context. But, yeah, yeah. Like, look, if a man has a whip, a whip. And a chain, and you know she's consenting, and she has signed in the three <laughs> requisite and initial here. Uh, and and have you had a situation where um, you were able to find the suspect after a, a good search and be, be able to bring, even if it was a repeat, even if she did go back, but where you could bu- button it up and you, you got we hey Mrs. Mrs. Smith, uh, Bob, Bob's in custody. Have you had a, had a situation like that? Hmm, I'm trying to think of the top of my head. Um, there was one recent, not necessarily, maybe like, not necessarily right, fitting those exact. Right. Uh, yeah. There was one where I got called out because, uh, to a call where, uh, a mother and father wanted to speak with me about a situation that was happening, um, with their child, two children. Um, and when they started asking me some questions, now this, I might not be able to get too into detail cause it does involve a minor. Right. Of course. So, uh, one minor was doing something to another, or one adult technically was doing one thing to another uh, child that was inappropriate, mm-hmm. and they were just asking me, "What do you think?" And as soon as I heard this, I was like, "Hey, we got to stop. I got to call somebody." And I, you know, we we called our, uh, I called up my chain, and the, unfortunately, the the child uh, was too, uh, the the danger was too immediate, mm-hmm. where we couldn't say, "Hey, we'll screw it, we'll get it later." Um, mm-hmm. So. After uh, doing a little more investigation on my part with the guidance of our detective, uh, we found enough probable cause to go to a location where we believed the suspect was. Mm-hmm. And sure enough, I, I, I was very proud of that because that all happened in one day. I walked up, saw him, a hey, so-and-so, yes, click, click. And uh, the parents were, of course, livid and freaking out because they just wanted some advice. They didn't think that it was going to turn into one of that happening. Mm-hmm. Um, but... I told them, hey, listen, you got to think about the safety of your children. And um, I wouldn't say I was proud, but I was relieved to get some guy like that off the street Mm -hmm. uh, and and at least bring some kind of, I wouldn't say closure or justice, because that family will never recover from something like that. So, um, I mean, mean, but at the end, I told them, you did the right thing. You had to protect your child. Did they eventually see it your way? Did they come around? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Still pretty pissed. I'm sure they are. Uh, All right. But, so, yeah. um, you know, my guest can't share too many details. But uh, for listeners, um, uh, 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 parents say, hey, we think person A is uh, sexually abusing our child, uh, has sexually abused our child. And when a patrol officer takes this call, and if any of this is wrong, Bob, tell me. But when a patrol officer gets his call, oh, shit, now I have to notify CID, our detectives. We have to notify the chain. And then oftentimes you have to get the Child Advocacy Center involved, the CAC, because cops, we can't sit there and interview the child victim. 
uh, you know, think about it, right? Uniform, gun, shield, standing there. You're like, you know, this guy touched you, right? So we bring the child in. The CAC specialist is a forensic interviewer, uh, uh, interviews the child and says, um, yes, this is a substantiated claim. Then you as the patrol officer, you as the investigator, you gather information and you're like, oh, there's enough probable cause to go find this fucking guy and hook him up right now for the safety of the child. This ain't something that we can cut a warrant and wait and have this fucking guy show up to the station with his lawyer. And then the parents get mad because they say, whoa, 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 whoa. we were just calling to tell you about this. We had some questions about, you know, this guy diddling our kid. We didn't want you to arrest this person who either they were close to or cared about or didn't want arrested. It's for the kid. <laughs> we did this for the kid. And so when you say, you know, they kind of didn't come around and didn't see it, but, you know, you literally put a child molester in cuffs and behind bars. Isn't that the thing that we say that we always wanted to do? And so how does that, how, how, how do you live with, how do you live with that? How do you live with that accomplishment, that achievement, that, that, that feeling, well, the, uh, the thing you signed up to do? <laughs> right. Uh, again, I, I mean... Is it bittersweet? It, it's again, it's unfortunate, um, you know, because again, that that child is never going to be the same. Sure, um, the family is never going to be the same. Uh huh. Hell, uh, and I mean, I don't know what kind of trauma they went through as as young children too. Mm-hmm. Whether it goes, whether it be the child or the parents, um, but uh, so that there's a little sadness in that, but there's also a lot of relief knowing that yeah, this I mean, this guy did it once. I mean, do it again. He might have done it multiple times. Multi- I don't know. Oh, he absolutely has right. done it multiple times so. before, and he absolutely will do it again. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, you know, the way I I always say, if not for you, then who? You, you're the you're the last line mm-hmm. of defense. You're the first and last line of defense. And so that that's something to be proud of. Do you uh, do you do you agree with that? Uh, absolutely, yeah. but uh, it's like a lot of this job is very black and white. But I think that was pretty uh, or gray. Sorry, yeah, this gray, is definitely yeah. this was definitely black yeah. and white. Yeah, or, or yellow. Yeah. <laughs> what well, What's your experience with DWI is like? I would like to think that I'm very competent in it, but oh, I know there's I know there's yeah. more. <laughs> Hold on a second, I'm rubbing my nipples. Yeah. Finally, yeah. Tell me about a little bit about your competency when it comes to DWIs. Why that's important? Uh, I, 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 there's a lot of officers that are very terrified of doing it. I don't know whether it's the because- saying. You know what the trigger warning is? It's a well, I'll do them. I'll I'll, <laughs> I'll do DWIs. I just haven't found one right. So. Um, uh, you know, I, I'm fairly confident uh, in my abilities to do a DWI, um, and I do actively go look for them because, hell, the way I look at it is, you know, I'm a huge, uh, I'm, I'm texting to the bone now, I'm, I'm a huge gun rights guy. That thing is a 3,000-pound bullet going 80-plus yep. miles an hour down the it's road. It's a deadly weapon. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, shoot, that, that thing needs to get off the street. If somebody is actively driving intoxicated, they got to go. Um, you gonna find, you gonna tap that ass, right? Right. Tap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Uh, and so uh, you probably don't know this. Uh, I was a DWI cop, SFST instructor, uh, A ride. You know, uh, I'm double jointed, Sagittarius. Mm. I like long walks on the beach, and DWIs are super, super important to me. Uh, that's sort of the impetus of the show. Do your job. Do your fucking job. Um, do you have a good DWI story? Your best DWI story? I've had a lot of DWIs. It Good. was actually a, a joke Good. within my old shift where he, they were like, you and DWIs, man. And I'm like, dude, I pulled them over for registration. It just happened to be a drunk driver. you know. Uh, now, let's stop there for a there. second. Let's stop there, okay? Everybody in this room knows. My producer was a student of mine. Everybody knows the DWIs, they only come out on your shift, right? Right? So, like, you're on Bs, right? And then you have A shift, right? And all the DWIs are, like, behind the wall. Like, the, like, the, like the fucking wall. Yes, like, you know, right? And they're like, like what, my joke, right? It was like, in 300, like, hold! Right? Hold! You know, like, Bob's coming out. Like, he's, he's about to fucking start his shift. And they're like, go! Because DWIs only show up on your shifts. Because these other cops, they're not they're stopping for registration, but they don't get DWIs. You see what I'm saying? I'm talking shit about these other people. They're not paying attention to the DWIs. They either see them and they ignore them, or they're not seeing it. And that that's a fucking shitty cop right there. So that's what that is. It's not, 
oh, Bob, how come you get so many DWIs? And also, now that you've gotten fucking three DWIs, you're the de facto DWI guy, right? Mm -hmm. You know, oh, call Bob. He'll do it. No, it's that you actually do your fucking job. That That's the difference. You know, I just want to make that distinction. Yeah. If there are 10 cops in briefing, we're all stopping for registration. We're all stopping for speeding. We're all trying to get that chicken shit stop right? Because we want dope. We want marijuana. We want that joint, right? But only you're finding DWIs. That's amazing how that works, right? <laughs> well, it, it's, we know, we all know what weird driving looks like, yeah. right? So um, I always run, like any cop should, always run the tag on top of what you're doing. So you, You'd be surprised how many cops do not do that. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah. So I'll see some kind of, if I see some kind if of- If only there pattern, was some computer in the car. <laughs> that would, that would, go, go ahead. Yeah. So if I ever see some kind of like a uh, odd driving, for example, um, let me think of, I'm trying to think of one right now off the top of my head. Ah, there was a, um, I'm just trying to think. There was a vehicle that I saw going down the road and um, I got behind it. Nothing, nothing odd about it until I kind of saw some speeding, a little bit of swerve here and there. Uh -huh. well, that's kind of odd. So I followed that vehicle onto the turnpike and we're going, going. I run the tag real quick, and I already I already had the license plate one, you know. That, but that the light on the license plate, I think that's kind of a weak, but it's still part of it, I guess. I feel attacked. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that I mean, it, I'll, stop I'll, I mean, I'll use time. it if I'll use it if I got nothing else. But I like to have at least something else that's more, you know, because everybody's got no light on their damn license plate. Um, so that's why everybody gets stopped after two a.m. <laughs> but but uh, did the plate come back clean? Oh, uh, so his registered uh, registration was expired. Okay. So I was like, okay, I got, I got. You got PC. I got yeah. two PCs now, yeah, and yeah. maybe actually had a third one too. He, you but, have one and a half PCs. How about that? There you go. We got okay, one and right. a half. So yeah. I stopped that car. Good. And I had my suspicions that it was possibly intoxicated, but I couldn't tell too much because it was going kind of fast, and I was trying to catch up. But I managed to get the plate. Um, sure enough, that guy was drunk, real Good. drunk, uh, and, and that was of course terrifying to do SFSTs on the turnpike when it's dark as hell. Are but, you by yourself? Uh, another unit got there eventually. Okay, but <laughs> but, but you know you're kind of doing your thing yes, and, and trying to. You know, and, you know, we, we don't, in, in enforcing this very deadly offense, you don't want to jeopardize yourself. But you did your job, and did he consent? He actually did. Yeah. I sweet talked him. Yeah, for, yeah, for, it's the attractive looks, too. Yeah, well, I mean, he fight, you could talk me out of my panties. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? I want to give you my fucking blood, and among other things. Uh -huh. uh, all right, so uh, the, the roadmap is... You observe something about vehicle emotion that catches your eye. Mm -hmm. You do the smart thing and you run the tag to make sure it's not a fucking ten. I mean, a stolen or anything like that. Ten X stolen Dallas, uh, but uh, that it's not stolen. And, and you you build your case. You build you and you don't have to light them up as soon as you see one PC mm -hmm. violation. Right? You can roll that body camera. You can roll that in car and start them going and find them. Have you had a difficult DWI? I mean, you always, once in a while, you get those people that say, What's the heart? Well, why? You know, yeah. what are you stopping? I mean, uh, <laughs> I have a recent one I can think of. Yeah. Um, are you on days or nights? I'm nights. Yeah. That's why you're so cool. <laughs> yeah. I, I would like to go to days. I'm sure my wife will love it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we'll get there. Uh, who, who gives it? Who, who, <laughs> who can't? <laughs> When has a man ever been affected by what his wife wants? Exactly. I, mean, I taught her how to shoot, so I got to listen. I shouldn't have done that. Oh, um, shit. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of a difficult one. He's going to wake up in bed, <laughs> and it's going to be like that scene uh, from uh, Goodfellas when he wakes up, and she's holding the gun. And it's, uh, you know, like. Who is you know, she? Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's a great movie. Yeah. Uh, classic. Classic. Um, if Lorraine Bracco were sitting on top of me in just panties with a gun, I, I'm not going to lie. I might have a little. She first. still looks good for her age. Dog. Uh, feel me air air, air fist bump yeah mm, that's that's, yeah, yeah that's what i'm you know, talking you about know, you know what we're talking yeah. about yeah oh well my producer doesn't like women we don't cast dispersions all right what do they call what do they say in yeah, vietnamese yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is, is it racist for me to do fake yeah, vietnamese me, me uh, on me yeah, yeah. I, I love i love that he can never defend himself during the recording it's nice uh, yeah uh, okay so um you know difficult dwi different your difficult dwi for, for the most part, uh, I think uh, everyone's pretty been compliant with me. Again, I can, I again, I, tr I always try to remain professional and empathetic, mm -hmm. and I try to remain courteous. So I barely, is rarely do I come across somebody who, in, in any type of uh, situation, situation where it's they're not compliant with me. But mm -hmm. when it does happen, uh, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Um, one I can think, the most recent one I guess I had was um, we got a call about a. There's a lot of screaming apparently to dispatch, but there was a person trying to drive their vehicle 
was turned on and trying to reverse out of the parking lot, um, intoxicated. Like a business parking lot. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, with restaurants and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. And uh, people there. Who's used, call? Who's the caller? It was, a, I guess, a friend. Right. Yeah. Or somebody. Like, uh, J- Janie's trying to charge a car away. <laughs> and, <laughs> <laughs> Janie, don't do it. Don't do it. Real. Come on. Brad is going to take you back. So, <laughs> is that about right? Was that is it fairly accurate? Well, it wasn't a, a suburban white girl, but it was a it, it, it was a pretty diverse crowd. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he means black. Uh, well, it was a yeah. I mean, yeah. there was there was white people too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, it's uh, the friends. The friends were trying to get the vehicle, the keys out of the vehicle because right. you know she's trying to back out of there. Right. They finally managed to do it. Um, Good. Ladies outside of the vehicle. Mm-hmm. I get there. It was even. I was even the primary officer. I just got there faster. Um, so I get there. I'm over. The other officer was taking their time. I don't know, but I got there because nobody likes DWIs. And uh, there's nobody in the vehicle in the driver's seat. Car is turned off at this point. Mm-hmm. The RP, the reporting party, already had the keys in her mm-hmm. hand. They said, "It's not my car. I took the keys off my friend." And mm-hmm. okay, and I start doing some questions, um, finding out what's going on. Um, the lady that said that's my car, and of course she's not really trying to say that she drove or anything right. like that but i just we talk her just talk to her professionally and courteous and eventually she goes yeah i'm intoxicated he was like okay did you get in the car and you you go yeah backed up a little bit and i'm like okay so i got not only do i have a good witness which is really all you need mm-hmm. uh, but i have a good witness credible a couple of credible witnesses um that all told me the same thing but now this person admitted to me that she drove a vehicle operated a motor vehicle mm-hmm. intoxicated in a public place mm-hmm. including a parking lot mm-hmm. so i go okay and um I'm not going to throw the other officer under the bus because I like that officer a bunch. Uh, but there was a, you know, that gray area where it's like, well, I didn't really, we didn't really see the operating the car. And I said, no, screw that. I'll take it. This is good with me. Yeah. yeah. I'll take it because, you know, yeah, I, I got it. So I, I took it and. Uh, and you got some pushback from the other cop. <sighs> not pushback, no. Um, the other officer was very supportive. I don't okay. know if it was just uncertainty. I think or it's uncertainty. Because it it, it's, it's, it's nothing on against and that officer. It's the way they're trained. Not everyone who doesn't want to take a DWI is a piece of shit. Some of them are just not trained or have the experience. Right. And so you, have, you do have some FTOs that go, right. unless you see them behind a the driver's seat. Uh, which is not true. And right. I'm like, yeah, that's, right, that's horse right, shit. Right. right. But uh, <laughs> um, sure enough, um, I'm raiding the DIC 24. Uh, she gets did mad. You, did you SFST her? Yes. Um, okay. So that's, and, it was all, all of it. Um, and she submitted to it? No. <laughs> okay. Well, not to the, not to the blood <laughs> warrant. Sorry. So we did the, so we did the SF, the HGNs. Uh-huh. I had all of it. Um, so other, she, so, I'm sorry. So you did all three tests. I didn't follow through with the second, with the walk and turn or the one leg stand. Oh, okay. Because of her inability to maintain upright. Because <laughs> she's, she's fucked. She was going to fall she's over and hurt she's, herself. She's fucked up. Yeah. Right. So I was like, she's going to fall and hurt she herself. She sounds, she also sounds big. I don't know why. <laughs> why are you laughing? I, I mean. Yeah. I mean, okay. she's, she's big yeah, she, she's, was, she was a little larger than yes. most, uh, now hold on a second can we just stop for a second and acknowledge how amazing that was I knew just from the story that she was a big old fat girl right yeah yeah. I knew, I knew that and she had like how many oh how many bracelets did she have yeah, she, she, had, she, she actually did have a few bracelets on. come on I'm looking at my producer come on come on who knows DWIs and white girls or whatever she was. All right, go ahead. And so, she, so she can't. She does. She and now you're DIC. She's in custody. Yes, sir. Yeah, she's in custody. Uh, Back she, of the car. She's hooting and hollering. She's. Right, I wasn't yeah. driving. I wasn't driving. I'm like, I, I don't think you know. It's, it doesn't matter. You don't need to be driving. Mm-hmm. It just need to be an operation. So I throw her in the back seat. All right, ma'am. I'm gonna read you something right quick. Go go get the sheet and start reading. And it's just nonstop. Right. Fuck, yeah. you, fuck, fuck, fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck, fuck, fuck you. Yeah. Piece of shit. Fuck you. Fuck. Let's would, recreate that. Yes, you be her. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be you, all right? You ready? All right. Ma'am, fuck you're you, under fuck arrest you, for an fuck offense you, piece arising of shit, out of acts alleged you, to have been fuck committed you, fuck while you were operating. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's good, right? Yeah, so yeah, I, yeah. I kept going. And she goes, you're reading too fast. You're reading too right, fast. Right, and, right. I'm like, and then when you go, uh, did you understand everything I read to you? No. You know, they, they, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I, I read in it. And then I said, you, you understand, I'm not requesting yes that's, or no. Best, yeah. Right. She goes, fuck you. Right. Okay. All right. So That's a denial. walked away. Um, then he did it in Korean. Oh, yeah, like, you know. yeah, yeah. uh, man. I should have done it in something else, too. Yeah, yeah. I should, if I always wonder if I did it in gibberish, I'll, anybody would know the damn difference. But um, Well, I'm, I'm, I was, I, I, one time I had to, uh, <laughs> I had to do it in French, and I used Google Translate. I copied and pasted it, mm. and I let it read it over. But he was being a dick. Like, like he was, I was like, do you, you know, English, Spanish. He's like, no, no, I don't understand. I don't understand. I was like, what? Like, he's like, French, like being a dick. He was not French in any way. I was like, boop, 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 you know, like, like s'il vous plaît, on, on des, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, 
parlez-vous? Like, do you understand? You know, like, and I'm like, no, like, how the fuck do you say blood in French? And okay, so uh, she, 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 she essentially refuses. Uh, yeah, yeah, so she, she refuses, and then uh, I go, okay. I will give kudos to her, though. Not one single racial slur. It was just, you're an asshole, you piece of shit. That's good. Fuck you. Like, that's, right? you know, that's, that's good. <laughs> that's the small victories, right? Yeah, I was like, yeah. this is great. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I, I usually get something like, you know, you Jackie Chan Chinese looking right, someplace right, right. or something like that. But um, <laughs> She's like, well, I'm not a monster. <laughs> so we take her and um, I, get, I get the blood warrant. Um, after we're getting the blood warrant, she that person did not want to come out of the jail cell. Refusing. Oh, is that right? And, of course, that's, you know. So he back, he backed up the forklift because <laughs> yeah, he's a big girl, right? Beep beep. Yeah, like. And of course you got you know it's refusing you know you're, right. you're, you're interfering with custody or transfer. And, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What, I forgot the name. Yeah. Resisting arrest. Resisting arrest. Transfer. Right. transfer. Right. There you go. Um, Jesus, is this guy really? Yeah. Oh, it's, it. it's a tongue twister. <laughs> God. Um, well, especially when English not your primary language. Right. Exactly. You know, like, yeah. Is Texan a language? It That's, is. A, it is Texan English. There you go. It's right. Thing. It's Texan English. Right. Uh, but eventually. We got it going because we we threatened her with the charge, good. and she's like, I don't, and of course she's like, I, I'm a, I know a good lawyer, I'm gonna sue everybody. Sure, go yeah, ahead. okay, go ahead. Yeah. And so, um, eventually, yeah, eventually we got it done. That was the most recent one I can think of. Um, as far as anything, I've I've yet to on a DWI, and I've done a lot. I have yet to actually have to yank somebody out of the vehicle. Mm-hmm. I just tell him, listen, dude, like, can you just step out? I'm just trying. And they go, okay, go ahead. you're a nice guy. <laughs> but that that's that's command presence, but that's also patience. Uh, you know, my, I, I used to tell students uh, with GWIs, it's uh, you catch more flies with honey than vinegar. So I, my expression was honey, not vinegar. You know, just, all right, so come on out. And you know, I'm the nicest cop in the world. I don't want to see you go to jail. I just want you to go home. And you want to go home, and so mm-hmm. that just that steady patience is that is that what works for you? Yeah, yes, sir. Um, I I have no problem taking my sweet time yep. on, on those types of investigations. That's the thing. Don't rush, right? Right. right. And I, I mean, there are times where I forget to do some things here and there, but I'm I'm not worried about it. Again, you can motherfuck me all day. I do not care. Right. It, it don't bother me. Not. not not a you know threats, racial epithets, and all. Whatever it's, you want. You've already won. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> you've got your collar, you've got your car towed, and you're getting that blood. Sure. E- either way. Mm-hmm. Did you always feel like you wanted to do law enforcement? Did you tell me that? Or, uh, or is it just something you happened upon? I mean, uh, when you're, I mean, I think, at least for me, and I know this is a very similar experience to a lot of officers, I just kind of had it in me. I, I mean, I was always interested in the service and law enforcement when I was a kid. You know, you're driving the little, you're watching cops on TV, <laughs> you know, and you're like bad boys and, and whatnot. And um, uh, I always knew I wanted to be in the Marine Corps. And mm-hmm. I always knew I wanted to be, I, I wasn't sure about law enforcement where exactly. I did want to go federal at, at initially. Mm-hmm. I figured federal job with the military. Yeah, yeah. You're going to, I want to work immigrations in particular um, and not, 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 well, I want to work for ICE. Right. Um, Kick all the undocumented <laughs> well, Koreans I will, out. <laughs> that are, you know, the Vietnamese. Yeah. But uh, this, uh, the, it, it was, and then of course I've only had positive experiences like the one I told you about with my, with my father being arrested and then um, just going to the service. And I was like, I already knew when I joined the service, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I think I'm probably going law enforcement after. And that was it. Just service to community and country and all that good jazz that, well, can you can you tell me how your dad getting arrested be, was a positive experience? I know you said the cops were positive. Yes, sir. But uh, how did that affect your life? I mean, was it? Oh, definitely positive. Well, for I since now the beatings happened since I so he was as far as I he was remember. arrested he was arrested for DV. Yes, sir. Yeah, and I can remember as far as back as I remember he was doing physical okay. acts of violence um, and very abusive. He was, a, he was a cheater. He was an alcoholic. I mean, I love whiskey. I'll drink a whskey bottle one night sitting, but right. it's. You know, I'm not you're not going, you're not beating your wife right, right. And, and stepping out and, and not doing and, it daily too. Right. So yeah. uh, he uh, he would do that, and um, it it got to the point where I just kept telling my mom, just why don't you all just divorce? And for a seven six seven year old child to tell to you say mom, that, just divorce, please. And how, did you have siblings? I did my my baby brother. Um, just the two of you? <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, and Is he uh, on the job? Uh, my baby brother actually tried initially thought about the service and went to a military school, and then that didn't work out. Then he. Wanted to, no, well, then he thought about being a firefighter. Now they don't work out. Just kind of all. Now he's, he's, he's now, he, now, he, now he's a podcaster. <laughs> now he's yeah. actually a, yeah. uh, he's actually a preacher now. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, so, um, you know, you see this mm-hmm. history, and I'm sorry, we're going back to childhood, yes, but, sir. but, um, dad does this. He gets caught. He gets hooked up. Did, did he return? 
Yeah, so my mother actually got away from him on a real beat, bad beating that I was witnessing and trying to get my brother out of. Um, mm-hmm. And she called 911, and that's how she managed to dial 911. That's right, yeah, that's and good. Yeah. That's when they got arrested. I'm not crying, but I have an Asian yeah. thing going on. It's okay. Uh, um, yeah, it's the, okay. When he got taken away, I was, again, I was very relieved. Um, good. For a child to see and be happy that dad's going to jail. Yeah, no, thing. fuck him. Yeah. And uh, I remember. Now, granted, I, I actually, well, I met him later down in life, but uh, after that, it, the whole, it, the house got more quiet, you know, <laughs> it was like, God, it was, and, in a good way. And it yeah, did traumatize yeah. my baby brother. Right. Uh, unfortunately, we never talked about it until, I mean, it's, well, he's, an, well, he's an adult now, but we never really talked about it too much. But uh, I, I know he's, I know he still has those memories too. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe not as vivid as mine, but he's definitely, uh, I think it's a very positive in a way that we I will never put my hands on my wife like that. I will never drink to that point where I'm doing that. I'll never cheat on my wife. You know, um, I'll never expose my children to fighting. Me. So me and my wife, we never fight. It's mostly her just getting mad at me for doing something stupid. And I have enough. Is she Asian? No, she's white as all get out. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, yes. Oh, no. She's actually a Yankee, too. She's yeah. from uh, Pennsylvania. She's actually a Yankee, too. She's from she, she, she actually a Yankee, too. Oh. The, those words haunt my dreams. Yeah, like, she's actually, you from the North? You know, like, <laughs> next thing he'll be like, charge! You know, like, like, like Whistling you, Dixie. <laughs> you will, you will take this flag from my cold dead head. Okay, so, so dad, dad, his life got better. Did, so he never, did, did he never returned, returned? He tried. Or, or he, he tried. tried. He tried. And I told my mama, no. But mom stuck to it. Yes, sir. And I Good. told my mama, no, no, no. And Good. she even asked me, do you want a father? I said, I have. I actually told her this uh, child. I said, I have God. I have you. I'm okay. God's my father. Wow. And that was it. Wow. That's beautiful. That, I, that, that, yes, that, 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 that's beautiful. And and let me ask you, if you had said yes, would your mother have taken him back? I don't know. She's yeah. a very... Uh, she I, obviously loves the shit out of you guys. She, I wouldn't. I don't know. I honestly don't know. Yeah, I'm just yeah. glad she made the right decision yeah, in yeah, the end. Yeah. Um, I mean, I had. She was worried definitely about father figures because this is a time when she moved to the country. Um, I don't know if you recall this. Um, this group of eight. I mean, I know in New York they had the Green Dragons, the White mm-hmm. Tigers, uh, mm-hmm. and those big old boys up there. Mm-hmm. KP. Um, mm-hmm. Over in mm-hmm. LA, they had. Uh, they were called Korean Killers. Mm-hmm. It was a huge mm-hmm. Korean mm-hmm. gang. They they were around like the mafia, and mm-hmm. she. A lot of them boys, my mother, Korean community was small back then, so mm-hmm. everybody knew everybody. And a lot of them had father issues as well. Um, Shocker. And, right. And it, and that's the very common denominator across all ethnicities of what's going to, you know, future year, maybe one day provide or produce a criminal is the lack of father. No, but all Asians are successful, Bob. Right? <laughs> right? Right? We're yes, all, sir. all of us have mm-hmm. intact households with yes, no sir. violence and no misogyny and mm-hmm. uh, yeah, no, that's exactly the point, right? And she like, was definitely glad. Uh, and it doesn't <laughs> fucking matter what race, yes, sir. nationality you are. Like, family is family, and if dad's not around, you're going to turn up to be a piece of shit. You know, piece of shit. More yeah. than likely, yes, yeah. sir. Yeah, or, or, you know, a guiding light. You and know, that was her concern. Right. And yeah. we, I was heavily involved in uh, in football. Uh, my brother, too, followed after me. I was heavily involved in What sport. position did you play? Water uh, boy? <laughs> Sometimes. Actually, okay. most of the time, I think. There's a lot of talented men out what there. What position did you play? Because you... you you're, I played uh, the defensive back. Defensive back. Yes, sir. Is it, it Pee Wee? <laughs> <laughs> I love you, but you know, yes, sir. Right. Uh, he could probably kick my ass. No, know? no, that's not true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we, uh, <clears throat> but I had at the ball, I had, and I had Boy Scouts when it was still Boy Scouts at the time. Yeah. Um, and I had church. Now, you have so you have a lot of kind good of good mole, rip, uh, male role models. Around. Yeah, and a lot of like, uh, uh, what what am I trying to say? Good good routes, good guiding gu- yes, guiding paths. And your mother obviously cares for you guys. She does the right thing, tells him to beat the beat it, and doesn't allow him back. Was is, was is that? Yes, sir. Is, yeah, good. Ever see him again? I did later down the road as an adult. Uh, I was. Ooh, I love that. I, I was a. Uh, I was. I was still in the service at the time. Um, I went to Korea. And you have too. all these. You have all these skills where you can kill a man. Okay, go uh, on. Good. And yeah, yeah. I remember <laughs> when I saw him because I I had to speak through his sister, which is my aunt. Right. Um. I'm like the mediator between both sides. They don't. My both sides of my family don't talk, but uh, but for obvious reasons. Yeah, but, no uh, shit. I talked to uh, her, and then she got in touch with him to meet me at a restaurant in Korea. Now, mind you, I'm I'm Korean, but I'm I'm only Korean in America. When I'm yeah. in America, I am not Korean. You're, realize, you're American. I realize yeah, that yeah. right quick. Yeah, I'm yeah. culturally, I'm so different. Yeah, so, I don't bl- I don't fucking blend in with Chinese people here. 
Yeah, about two feet taller than most of them. Yeah, so. and they're like, "Oh, Shen Zeng, ni hao ma, ni jiang guo yi ma," and I'm like, "Bitch, I don't fucking do. <laughs> like." Can I get a number five brown rice, no onions? Like, like you know. So, uh, <laughs> so, so you're 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 at you're stationed in Korea. No, uh, for, no for, sir, for, I went there as a civilian. Oh, oh, I, okay. I have been stationed there. I've been stationed there oh, okay. before, but cool. uh, or not stationed, but I got deployed. But, there before. Right, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's but, the wrong uh, word. But yeah, okay. Uh, so you just happen to be in Korea, yes, sir. And as that, one as one does. I was visiting. Right, you know. <laughs> I was visiting my family, and yeah, I, yeah. I wanted to say, you know what. I might not get a chance to see this man. Sure, sure, yeah. yeah. Um, I hadn't seen him since I was maybe nine. Uh, so when I saw him, I remember he walked into the restaurant. You're in your time. 20s. You're in your 20s I now. believe I was 24 at the time. Right. And I remember he walked in, and the first thing I thought was, well, two things I thought was, wow, I look just like him. Crazy, and, right? And two was, he's a lot smaller than I remember. Um, and I remember, I remember I was a kid, I was thinking if I was bigger, I could just whoop this guy's ass. And sure enough, here I am. Now uh, you I'm way can. bigger. I'm bigger yeah, than yeah. <laughs> Um, and that's funny, right? Because when we were kids and our dads were, my, my dad beat my mom too. Uh, he beat all three of them actually. Um, and we were, we were like, uh, we were like, uh, no, I had, I had my biological mom. Oh, okay. I was, I was trying yeah, to yeah, wrap yeah. that brain. Oh, shit. Sorry. Yeah. Well, he's, we're, we're a Chinese Mormon. No, uh, <laughs> that'd be funny, right? <laughs> like the, oh, Chinese, uh, what is it? Sister wives, right? Chinese sister wives, the show. Right. All right. So like, this is Ming. This is Lee, you know, this is Xiao Jie, you know. No, so, so I had my, my biological mother, he beat her, and he beat me. Then I had uh, my stepmother who raised me, my Cuban stepmother, he beat her. You know, I'm jumping on his back. He flung me across the room as he's beating her. And then his current wife, he beats her. And that was the last straw, kind of like, you know, that caused mm. the whole family to break down. So my old man beat every one of his fucking wives. And, and when you're small, you're like, he's huge. He's domineering. Mm -hmm. I'm terrified because he beat me. He would beat me with sticks. He would, uh, Chinese people do this thing where they make you kneel in the corner. Oh, Koreans do. Okay. Hey, sir. Did, did, did you get it done on rice? Rice? Not, I know people who did happen to him. But or the phone me. books? The phone you, books, yes. You held up your hands. I yeah. See, that's how, that's how, yeah, you got to do the phone books. You know, I'm crawling back to bed and. Then you, I've told you the story, producer. But uh, I saw him in New York uh, for my grandmother's funeral, and this was kind of like the last. I know this podcast isn't about me, but no, please, you know. But but then I saw him, and I was like, I'm the biggest member of this family. I'm also a fucking cop, and I'm like, oh, he don't scare me no more. <laughs> We're here in the middle of the Murray Hill section of Queens. This is my town. This is my fucking street. Oh, you don't scare me anymore. You're not going to – so so I, I'm, I'm kind of feeling what you're saying when you're like, oh, he's a lot smaller than I remember. Right. Because when we were small, they were the, the – the, sure. the, right? Now I'm like, oh, I could fucking kick your ass and do it easily too. Um, you see him. You realize, oh, my God, I'm his spitting image. He's a lot smaller than I – what's he say to you? What is he – Any? is there any contrition? Well, something. Uh, Give I, me fucking something. On top of that, he was also – I remember also thinking, God, he's, he's so old. Like, I don't really yeah, yeah. you aged. And, um, <laughs> like, I don't even want to beat your ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, senior, oh, it was elder abuse. Um, <laughs> abuse of, yeah, it's yeah. Third, it's third, it's third, third Not in third Korea, degree. bitch. You know, like, like, uh. <laughs> um, they, I, well, I stuck my hand out. And we're at a restaurant. And I was going to order, I ordered food for us. And despite the fact that what he was to me and to my family in, in Asian culture, the respect thing of elders is still there, right? So I guess. So I went up and out of respect, because he's, you know, and I'll tell you what my uncle told me later, but um, I stuck on my hand and he shook it and then he embraced me. And I, I actually was taking it back. I was going to shove him back, but then I was like, you know what? This might be the last thing he does to, with me before he passes on to wherever he goes next. Um, so I just let him hold me. I gave him a pat, you know, he was crying and bawling. He sat down because he, he fled to Korea after all the divorce and stuff. Um, we sat down and he's still crying. And I'm sitting there just, yeah, just, just kind of like just all right, letting him do right. his thing. Uh, I got a lot. I was a little choked up too because I hadn't seen this man since God forever. And um, and our, as he's crying, I was thinking about my mind was fuck you, dude. Yeah, After yeah. Everything yeah. you did, yes. you're gonna be out here being the victim. You know, no. How much crying did I fucking do? Right. And my brother and my mother, mm -hmm. fuck you. I but but. Yes, sir. But you're different than I am, so go ahead. <laughs> so, you're a much better person than I am. And I remember there was a brief moment where I just, I think, I thought, um, okay, let me just, let me just, let me just be, just, just shush, you know? Right, yeah. 
So I just sit there, and first thing he orders out, and he's choked up. He says, um, I'm sorry. And, and he continues crying. And I just sit there again. I'm, at that point, I'm actually kind of, kind of choked up because right. I'm like, wow, he actually knows he fucked up. You know, I thought he was just a stubborn asshole. <laughs> um, so he says, I'm sorry. And we just kind of let it go for a little bit. And then I said, I told him uh, in a very broken, not broken, I would say, but a very thick American accent. I said, uh, then my family says I have one. I said, uh, you know, I'm, I can confirm this. You yeah. know, right. You, <laughs> do you fucking hear yourself? You have my headphones, right? You can hear you. Well, I was, but I mean, in Korean, it's a, the thick accent of it. Uh, so I said, uh, Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, sir. Well, so like when I speak Chinese, it's, it's fucked up because, okay. I, so you're speaking Korean and you have like the fucked up. American, American accent. accent. Yes, oh, I okay. can speak it. It's just very thick accent. I was like, I was like, does he not fucking hear himself? <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, and I said, uh, you know, <laughs> all that stuff that I, I was, I wanted to tell him, fuck you and this and this and that. And I remember after that moment, I had a sense of almost calm. And I said, you know, growing up, I hated you. And Good. he just keeps that there and he shook his head. Good. He's like, me, he understood. And I Good. said, I no longer have any hate for you. I want you to do well with life, rest of your life. Your other son and your your ex wife is okay. I'm doing okay. And then that was basically uh, he just want, after that he wanted to know. He goes and he started crying again. And he just asked me, okay, well, what are you doing with your life? At the time I was going to school as well, um, part time, and uh, just went over everything. Okay. Right. And then uh, I told what my brother was doing, what my mother was still doing, and I said, okay, well, uh, after that I said, well, we had I forgot what else we talked about, but when I imply that I have to get going because I didn't go there alone. Um, and then we just got up. I shook his hand. Split the bill. I paid for it. God damn it. Yeah. So I, I, I shook I'm such it. a Jew, right? <laughs> I'm like, so you had the mimosa and I had the jache, yes, you know? like, yeah. yes, And then, and then was, so uh, I, I then shook his hand and then I left the, I did leave my phone number at the time. And I said, you can call me, um, but make sure it's like good because I'm not going to, because I'm not going to listen to your drunk fucking texts and calls. I'm not. So I gave him my phone number. And said, you told him that. I said I did. Yeah. And what did uh, he? What did, did he kind of like? He, said, yeah, like, he, yeah, he, he like, did tell me he quit drinking. So I, like, I don't know if I believe him or not. Right. right. Uh, I gave him my phone number. Said call me if there's any situation. Like I, if he passes away. Um, call you. Yeah, I'm like, no. I would, he would you, at you least have that phone you. number. You want him to call you if he dies. <laughs> yeah, I'm dying. Well, at least let me know if you're dying. I'm like, okay. Right. Right. No. So uh, that way I could. Out of respect for my family, I would yeah. go to yeah. my father's side because I have relationships with my father's sure, side. Sure, sure, so sure. I would go to his funeral. Right. I would. Um, so I gave him my information and we shook hands and we walked away. And then my aunt called me and said, he's, cry- he's still crying in his car. I'm like, okay. Yeah, he'll get over it. <laughs> fuck Hopefully. Him. Yeah, fuck him. And then, but uh, he, I think he called me once or twice since. Um, and that was almost 10 years ago. I haven't talked to him since. Um, Do we know if he's... I My understanding is my aunt told me that he's... Um, has a new family now, married with kids and stuff. What the like fuck? I, the fucking balls on this guy. Maybe he changed. I don't know. Um, the fucking. I'm sorry. The fucking <laughs> hairy, shriveled up balls on this fucking guy. Plus, he's like seventy, right? Oh, right now he should. No, he should be sixty now. Who the fuck does this fucking guy think he is? Uh, so I guess he got married right after he went there or something. But yeah, uh, all his fucking crocodile tears. All right, a lot to unpack here. Okay, we're gonna. I promise, listeners, we're gonna bring this back to police. You are a much different person than I am. You don't have as much anger, or maybe you do, but is, is I and I and I'm the atheist. I'm the piece of shit atheist. But your your oh, no. your your faith. Uh-huh. I feel like I, I feel your faith coming through. Cause me, I'm different. Okay, I would have told this guy to go fuck himself, and we definitely would have split the bill. <laughs> uh, how? Well, how do you? You know your process. I'm fucking f- pissed for you and for your mother and for your brother. But you're just, I hate to say this, you're such a fucking nice guy. Like, well, you know. My wife will disagree sometimes. <laughs> tell, tell me, yes, tell me if you will, how much of that is you, the way you were raised, your faith, your benevolence, your your, your heart. Um, You say I was hot or my heart? Sorry, New York. Oh, okay, your, gotcha. your Your heart. How about this? Uh, do you want me to start talking like this? Is That's fine. It, I mean, whatever you're comfortable yeah, yeah. with, sir. It's you, your podcast. You, see, <laughs> you understand this more? Okay. <laughs> your heart. Your, your, your heart. No, how much of that is your heart? You, you know, your your you, you, okay. I've got you. You know what I mean? Like, like, because I'm I'm just I'm angry just listening to the goddamn story. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, there are times I still struggle with faith. I right. do. I'm no again, no Christian's perfect. I mean, there's an old saying: you don't go to a hospital and see healthy people. Right. The church is essentially a hospital for people who are weak. 
you know, struggling with their lives. Um, is that true? Is, is, is that right? I would say so, yes, sir. Yeah, I, I don't, I, I'm, I'm asking, I'm legitimately asking, I don't know. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, everyone. I thought everybody who goes to church is like super, like. That's you a know, stereotype, you know, like anything. Right, right. <laughs> yes, sir. Like the perfect, you know, I go to, because my, okay, so full disclosure, my mm-hmm. wife is religious. She's super religious. Yes, sir. And we, we go to church and I'm like sitting in there like, you know, playing Tune Blast. Or toy blast, right? You know, like we have to destroy the toys. No, but but like I go there, I'm like, oh, like everybody here seems like normal and like nice, and they don't have any problems. But I guess you're saying like they're there for faith, they're there yes, for sir. guidance. And, I mean, yes, sir. And yeah, you're struggling. interesting, interesting. Uh, our, before we go back to that, uh, the, well, how faith shaped me is. Um, I remember one of my pastors told me years ago. Um, my old pastor. Now, are you saying pastor or are you saying pasture? Like we're the <laughs> same. Ah, oh, two can play this fucking game, all right? Yeah, yeah <laughs> you like that not shit. Pa- yeah. Not pastor, but yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. my pastor. Yeah, yeah. Not, not, not that, oh, say a Mexican pastor. Taco, taco yeah, yeah. Pastor. Oh yeah. See, aha, yeah, yeah. uh-huh. oh, yeah, that's yeah. much. Not see. Yeah. Ahora nosotros podemos hablar. Okay, now we can talk. That's all right. right. Yeah, because you see, uh, he, he was, I think he told me you, you speak a little, a little Spanish. I grew up in a Hispanic community, good, so I, good. I grew up with it a little bit. Um, good. Well, good. use that accent, you know, like, <laughs> yeah, you know, like, well, when I was a little kid, you know, and my, my, <laughs> mi papá se fue. He, no, no go, yes, it's, so how, your, your faith, how does that yes, inform, sir, the, the pastor you? told, I remember there was a sermon he gave. He, he had this, um, my old church, he had a, now was Baptist, but he had a bunch of these uh, notes, cards, and he was reading through, and he goes, before we judge, it basically the idea was about sin, temptation, and judgment. He reads to these lists of sins, you know, cheating on your wife, pornography, you know, uh, this or like whatever it was. And he kept going over all these like atrocious sins. I was like, God, man, was, these are confess, these are prayer cards asking for help from members of your church. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Whoa. like that hit me. Oh, these are real, Sorry. real prayer oh, requests, oh, oh, prayer requests that to the pastor and the group. Can you pray for me for my temptations and what i'm doing wrong me fucking the secretary you know <laughs> yeah yeah oh exactly and i was looking around like god like, all these motherfuckers here at the church right, 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 i'm right, not right. the only one struggling oh interesting. and i'm not the only one that's uh, i'm not a hypocrite i've always felt like i was a hypocrite oh. growing up as a child um, okay okay just, how can i reach perfection like christ but of course that means to be like christ not to be christ but i was gonna say right. i don't know much about religion but that's a pretty high bar yes sir i mean yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's why we always fall short so the the, the faith that my mother one could say he's the Michael Jordan of gods. <laughs> all, right, all right, that's super sacrilegious. <laughs> Sorry, it's okay. I, I don't. I hope I'm not. No, no, you're good, man. I voted for Trump. I don't care. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> almost made me fucking headphones fall off. Having been through what you've been through, um, when you go to domestics, and I'm bringing it back to the domestic realm, sure. uh, because um, you experience a lot of turmoil, you experience a lot of trauma. What did your turmoil and trauma? How did that inform your? Uh, how does or how does that inform your approaches to to domestics? Well, uh, often cases the the perpetrator, whoever is committing the type of family violence, they don't really think they're doing anything wrong. Often cases, mm-hmm. especially from immigrant families, that's just how they do it in the old country. Whether I know a lot of Hispanics can agree, mm-hmm. I know a lot of Hispanics do go through the same thing. Mm-hmm. Asians go through the same thing too. Mm-hmm. Um, With Asians, it's a lot of like. We're keeping it in the family. Hush, Don't hush, talk to hush, law sir. enforcement. Right. And uh, How, can, can you pierce that veil? Are, are you able to pierce that veil? That's, well, that's always a hard part. But um, yeah, I mean, uh, well, within my family, it, it, I think in Asia, especially in East Asian cultures, it's very, uh, again, like you said, just keep it within the family. Keep it hush hush. We don't need anybody else knowing our business. Especially cops. Because Asian, the family honor is always kind of a big thing. Right. You, you, but um I mean, shoot! I don't care. I'm Americanized as hell, so yeah, right. And I, 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 I that's what I'm, 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 a, I'm a cop first, and then I'm, I guess, second. I'm, I'm American, and like I can appreciate this cultural, mm-hmm. like, uh, affect. But no, I'm, I'm gonna arrest you. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna find the guy who did this to you. Oh yeah. Uh, is there a large Korean population in in, in the city you work in? Oh, not in, not in the city. I mean, they're they're there. It's just not like. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I would argue they're everywhere. <laughs> they're, they're, they're there, but they're not like uh, like the Vietnamese that yeah. that plague. I'm just kidding. <laughs> that are our, our producers Vietnamese. Yes, sir. The 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 the, the, uh, the, the, the plight. You know the 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 infestation of Vietnamese. Right. In them your, and their in damn pho restaurants in every corner. Right. Yeah. yeah. You know, like they're all the fucking same. We get it. You know, basil and fucking bean sprouts. Um, mm, that's good meal right there. So. Yeah, actually, that is what we should do. Yeah, in the fucking podcast. Yeah, I know. I know we're we're kind of stereotyping ourselves, but all three of us are like a big bowl of photos. Sound pretty fucking good right now. <laughs>
So we obviously see why you sign up for the job. You're a, a servant. You are committed to your fellow man. Can you tell me about the best collar, the best arrest of your life where, where you, you, you got the, it served justice. It brought you satisfaction. You were able to come to the victim and tell her or him, Mr. or Mrs. Bob, this person is, can, can you give me a, a, the best arrest of your life, <sighs> of your career? Well, anything with children, I'm, I'm, I, I mean, I don't know if you ever watched the movie uh, Sound of Freedom. I'm not trying to advertise or anything like that, but anything involving kids. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm familiar with the movie. Yes, sir. Um, it's so for someone to abuse a child in any way, shape, or form is to me one of the most egregious sins that you could ever do. Um, so I guess the one where we talked about previously mm-hmm. that's probably yeah, the that's, most yeah. satisfactory for me. Mm-hmm. Um, there was one where three gentlemen uh, beat the hell out of a mentally retarded. I shouldn't say that word now, right? It's PC. Ah, fuck it. The mentally uh, right. handicapped. MHMR, whatever. CIT, yeah, 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 mental uh, illness. They, three yeah. of them beat the hell out of this dude that was clearly not mentally there. Uh-huh. And they took off from me. They were actually, they were fast as hell. Now, granted, they had about a 100 yard head start. Right. I almost got there. Yeah. But they jumped the wall and everything. But we got them eventually. This is stranger on stranger? Yes, sir. And they, they just... These little three fucks. Just three little ghetto kids. Just, uh, not kids. Yeah. Well. Teen, teens. One of them was 18, child. 19, yes, sir. 17, 6, that age range. The, the age range where you do this kind of fucking shit. Yes, sir. The victim is just a mentally, mentally handicapped, yes, mentally deficient, uh, you know, uh, developmentally disabled person in a wheelchair. Yes, just sir. in the middle of the street. Just rolling along. Well, he was probably saying some crazy stuff, too. Okay. All right. But you could tell by looking at this guy. This guy's not all there. Right. So they uh, they beat the hell out of him. Completely random. Yes, sir. And I get there, and he's they, all messed up. There's three dudes standing there. I said, stop. And oh, I said, hey. And they take off. I run after him. They jump the wall. Now, there, I remember when they jumped that wall, I had briefly thought about jumping it, too. I'm not going to tear this off. My partner, I look back, and he's, he's, he's you know, he's, he's sucking. Fat. He's, he's fat. sucking. Yeah, he's, he's not fat. He's just not there. So he's, he's su- he, you know who he is? He's me, right? He's sucking wind. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'm a good sprinter. For the first three seconds, you know, I'm like, police officer, double, <laughs> 351, southbound, Main Street. Uh, yeah, so yeah, yeah. They, they jump it, and then I, I get, when I eventually get there, turn around, he's so far back, and I, one of them had a gun, apparently, to the, one of the witnesses. So I'm like, oh, shit, if I jump this wall. What's on the other side? They're going to fucking kill me. So I just say, fuck it. And I, we have it, we had their description, we had their, their names and everything, so I said, screw it. And, um, how did you have their names? So they actually were employees at a nearby restaurant. Oh, okay. And that's how <laughs> they were all wearing their Chili's shirts. One of them was wearing something, I think, that had the same clothes. But uh, oh, that's great. <laughs> um, that's how we managed to get them. Fucking ink criminals! They're so fucking. They're stupid. stupid. <laughs> so we managed. Uh, finally, it, it took about maybe six months because we got two of them. One of them. Uh, please God, let this guy be the Chili's with all the flair. You know all the buttons, oh, and the, the pins. Buttons. <laughs> like have have a baby back yes, rib sir. day. You know, like, like, chili. Right. They all took, but they, yes. they all you, took. You got off. their names, yeah. You, and you it, yeah. And eventually, one by one, uh, I found them. Uh, and tell, with, tell the, me, with the help of my partners, but we managed to find them. Just tell me how you did that without giving away too much details, if you don't want. Well, but. one uh, he was at his house, so okay. we just went there and got him. The Good. other one <laughs> was at another house. But uh, I guess stepmother or mother or somebody. Kind of investigation. I, that was actually by accident. Um, Tell we me. were investigating a noise, something with noise complaint or something like that. And he just happened to be one of the witnesses there. And I was like, wait, this kid looks familiar. We right. ran him. I'm like, oh, that's why. We hooked him up. The third one, my partner. Oh, this is over the course of yes, sir, days. Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, okay, months. Okay, okay. Uh, and months. months yeah. the, other, the last one, my partner just happened to be driving around. And he just saw this. The other one just standing out there. And like, oh, shit. And he just told me, hey, man, oh, he's out man, here. That's beautiful. The kid went in the house and... I went there and we knocked on the door. And Mom answered, said, "Hey, we know who he is. We just saw him here. Either you bring him out, or we go in there and get him." Did she which cooperate? I bluffed, of course, but yeah, did she cooperate? She did. Yeah, she did. And then we, then we hooked him up. But uh, but definitely out of all of the ones I've done so far, that child one we talked about earlier was my most. I was very happy to get that son of a bitch off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. My mother, she struggled, of course, single mother at that point when mm-hmm. I was a child, and then. I saw how the church came together and they all pulled in money until she right, got a job, right. yeah, yeah. until she could start up her own business. And she never once lost her faith. She always gave tithe, which is 10% of your mm-hmm. earnings to the church. And she never once lost her faith. Um, and I saw 
maybe even though mine was weak, I saw the faith in her and I could feel God, I guess, in a way. Jokes and on the church. This podcast makes no money. <laughs> hey, sir. <laughs> and we struggled. Don't get me wrong. And yeah. I struggled with the faith even throughout. And I actually kind of lost it in high school. And then when I joined the service, sure. it actually came back to me. That's funny. Uh, hey, sir. There's an old saying, there's no atheist in a foxhole. In a foxhole, right. right. <clears throat> and it came back to me and I... I mean, I don't know if it's, I mean, it's a good Lord definitely got me through, you mm-hmm. know, uh, everything that I've been through in life and as up to that point and even through my time in the service. And um, I remember I went through a, I went through a dark phase in my life when I got out of the service as I was getting out. Um, did you have PTSD? Um, I've never been diagnosed, but I did have to go to some meetings. Mm-hmm. I've never official diagnosis. Uh, and I've had issues. I, and my wife would tell me, you know, I've, I've cried in my sleep, yelled in my sleep, you mm-hmm. know, just weird things like that. But um, she's been great. She's a godsend. Um, and she and I are growing in our faith together because she, she used to be Catholic. Uh, she's not anymore. Yeah. I got to be. Yeah, me too. Me, North, me too. Yeah. Like every Irish or yeah. Northeastern uh, European yeah. <laughs> right? so or, or Northeast, uh, they're all Catholic. Yeah. Up yeah. There. yeah. So um, be, knowing that how faith has shaped me and how much I struggled. And mm-hmm. how still I feel God's grace and I feel salvation. That's where I can use. That's where I. That's when I start looking at people as my fellow man, uh, as God's God's child, and to use that in policing, I, I've been able to utilize that as well. And I do view them as God's children, struggling, uh, hurting, just like me. I'm no different from them. The only difference between me and that gangbanger, maybe that maybe I had my a good strong mother who was not on Section Eight or whatever it may be. Put me, put me through church. Right, yeah, he and I probably grew up the same. Uh, right. Essentially, I don't know, um, and that's the way I try to look at them. And, and so the, the the analysis is, uh, um, religion and the church is somebody who needs help, who's imperfect, who's imperfect. I guess in in your in your faith, and you view the citizenry who needs help or a suspect or someone who's addicted as mm-hmm. that imperfect brother or sister mm-hmm. and you bridge that gap that's how you bridge the gap is mm-hmm. that is that the right analysis essentially yes sir that's actually yeah. quite good <laughs> yeah um the the actions are not necessarily reflections of the heart and maybe evidence of it your actions may be evidence of what's inside your heart and we're gonna take it a task we're yes, gonna ar- I'm, I'm gonna arrest you for absolutely. show absolutely for show you yeah. know but you know i remember i have a i'm notorious in my department for not writing certain citations when i should i don't like doing it so i i remember i Oh, I'll give two examples. Um, there was one example I pulled a lady over. Now, she had no insurance. Now, our departmental policy is you write them a citation, you arrest them, or you tow their vehicle. And she's like, God will provide <laughs> liability and comprehensive collision in the event that... Well, the good, I, so, funny to that is uh, <laughs> I pulled, I stopped her. Registration's okay. God has PIP and underinsured motorists, <laughs> you know? <laughs> That'd be funny. But, yeah. uh, I, I tell her... And I see there, she has kids with her. Right. Which, which I'm a little pissed off. All yeah, right. Yes, sir. Right. She yeah. has kids with her. I'm and a little pissed off. She has a security guard night uniform on. Right? Okay. And all she's right. going on her way to work. She's dropping her kids off by their mothers to go to work. She's a single mom. She's, I could tell just by looking. So already we have somebody who's not a piece of shit and doesn't have insurance, but is trying to do the right, right thing. And I asked her, what's going on? She goes, sir, it's, it's either, it's either pay my, it's either pay feed my, my kids feed or my, pay my insurance. Right. And I'm like, which is often a case. And yeah. I looked at those kids and I looked at her and I was like, ma'am, I'm violating everything right now. Do me a favor. When you go home tonight, I'm not going to write you a citation. Just go home tonight. I'm putting my job on the line. Go on the home tonight and get yourself the crappiest $10 insurance you can find just so you can have it, please. You know, and her car is very noticeable. That's why I pulled it over. <laughs> so uh, the funny thing is about a week and a half, two weeks later, I pulled that same vehicle over. And I completely forgot about the car until I ran it. And I was like, oh, shit. I already pulled it over. Like, Damn it. Right. Because it comes up in your right. neighbors as yes, previous encounter. So I pull, I walk up, and I'm like, damn it. I'm probably off the rider citation this time. I had the light. How you would doing, you, ma'am? But, but would you, you didn't run her and didn't come back with insurance return? You know what I'm saying? Like, no, it sir. It said to uh, verify. Verify uh, manual. Un- unconfirmed, right. So I went up there. I was like, damn it. Yeah, she's, yeah. She's like, smiling. She, she, she didn't get insurance again. She's right? smiling yeah, yeah. and she's holding this paper. She recognized me when I was walking up. I looked and it was sure enough insurance. It was good insurance. And I told him, man, fictitious. I, I said, <laughs> possibly. Oh, that's all <laughs> no, I needed I'm, to I'm see. Just, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm it probably I'm, is fictitious. I'm trying to fuck up your she, nice story. But, she probably tapped it up. But, but, she, but she, she got your message and, and she saw you and she proudly showed yeah, you. And I said, I'm so happy you did, ma'am. She goes, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I was like, all right, ma'am. Because she knows that's a $500 fee probably you know mm-hmm. and if she has a previous conviction which she probably does mm-hmm. right yeah yes, sir 
Uh, so you took a chance on someone who was imperfect that you saw in light of your faith. Yes, sir. And uh, my, as a child that grew up, we could have gone on food stamps, uh, but you you could have. Yes, right? sir. I remember right? a very vivid story of of uh, saying another one is we were when I was young. There was those dollar stores where you buy everything for a dollar. Um, I don't know if you live in Texas now, but they currently exist. Not the Dollar General. Uh, they, what are they? Well, yeah. The dollar stores is a general term to refer to these stores. Yes, <laughs> okay. But there was a specific store. I can't remember what the name of that store was. He's like, they have these restaurants where you can drive your car through for food. <laughs> They're called drive throughs Okay. Uh, yeah. Dollar stores. Yes, 99 sir. cent only stores. Dollar stores. Okay. And this was about a year after. <laughs> I pressed the wrong button. Yeah, right. yeah. We can, we'll cut that out. But all right, so, <laughs> I keep it in. So, shit. Yeah. Right. Just uh, that'll that'll go in bloopers. Um, all right, so uh, you're talking about your family. Yes, there was there was a very vivid memory that I have, and my brother was not there at the time. Thank God. Um, but we, my mother went to this dollar store with whatever money she could scrape up, cleaning people's toilets and whatnot, and which she did for a long time. But she was trying to we were trying to get milk and stuff out. She was trying to buy some milk and stuff, and bread, and she didn't have enough money on her. And okay. I remember standing there, and there's a line behind us, and I remember standing there, and she has to tell the you know, person, hey, sorry, you can take that out, take that out, take that out, you know. But this whole, it was a very long time, and then we just left with what we had. And I remember standing there going, I will never let my mother mm-hmm. do this ever again. Mm-hmm. I will never have to go through this ever again. Mm-hmm. Neither will my children ever see it. Um, and so when I know that struggle myself, and I see it um, every day when I do a traffic stop, I, you know, again, going back to the human, you know. We have to be able to insert some humanity yes, into it. Otherwise, we'll just have robots. Like I said, right, AI pulling people over and writing violations. Right, there has right. to be a human behind it. And that's what these people pay for. Mm-hmm. That's why you took an oath. That's why that's why we take oaths, yes, right? right? It's not a requirement. I've, I've said you've heard the speech before, right? I'm pointing at my producer. Taking a, having a shield and taking an oath is not a requirement in any statute. Mm-hmm. You're just a peace officer who's commissioned by the agency. But we, it means something to people. Yes, sir. I take oaths very seriously. I've only taken three oaths in my life. Uh, I've taken it when I joined the service, which I took to heart. I took it when I got, took this got, job. Got on the job, yeah. And I took it when I married my wife. Right. And I will do all, all of those three things. And two out of those three things he kept to this day. So no, far. I'm, I'm just, yeah, so I'm, far. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, not over yet until yeah, yeah. we death do his part, right? Yeah, so <laughs> yeah. got a long way to go. Yeah, well, you know, just don't fuck your secretary. Yeah. Mm. We see that we see the prayer card. Mm. He's like, well, I, I went on this podcast. <laughs> And the producer was sexy. So I, God forgive me for my sin of fucking that producer. He also got crabs on his thigh. Yes, there. he got that. That baby, that ain't crabs. That's them, <laughs> them shingles. Uh-huh. My motherfucking motherfuckers, Benjamin buttoning before uh, our very from fun. the Mekong Delta. Yeah, yeah, be- <laughs> from the street, from the streets of Hanoi. <laughs> um, but yeah, but uh, going back to my fa- my my mo- my in laws now, um, they're they're from outside of Philadelphia, so I've heard the use and the my my cousins are Yankees in New York. It's just crazy. We're so spread out everywhere too now. That's good, and your kids will. Um, I wanted to I wanted to bring this up before, but when you guys event no kids yet, right? No, sir. But when you get, I don't think s- so. I don't think I have any. Uh, well, you know, when a bunch of little. Uh, They're all little, over the world. I'll tell you that <laughs> little baby showing up in like a sle- like a low cut shirt with like high cut sleeves and tattoos. I'm like, yeah, it's probably his kid, Bob, Bob's kid. <laughs> um, what I was gonna say is um, when we talk about never letting our families th- that happen to our families, whether it's your father, whether it's the poverty that you guys experienced. Um, you know, we talk about cycles, right? Like, well, he beat his kids and his wife because he was beaten his grandfather blah, blah, blah. but we're, we're breaking that cycle mm-hmm. I, I, I think and um, that's a huge um, well it's a it's, it's a weight to care it's not huge <laughs> we can get it done but uh, I like that right that we're not, we're not going to repeat that oh, cycle and that is the beauty of this again this American dream in this country right it doesn't matter where you come from what your background is <clears throat> if you're coming here to willing to accept the American ideology and work your ass off you don't have to be like wherever you came from or your or whatever family past you have right and we can break these yes, stereotypes. Sir. Going back to the model minority, we, we're, we're going to break these stereotypes for good and for bad, but hopefully mostly for good. And you, you're, you'll never, and I have never, and you will never, hopefully, lay a hand on the person you love. Absolutely. And our kids will never suffer 
like we did. And, and, and that's, that's a great thing, breaking that cycle, bearing this, shouldering this responsibility. Thanks so much for listening, subscribing, and sharing. Please rate and review the show and follow us on all platforms. You can hear us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. Our website is nfipodcast.com, YouTube at NFI Podcast, and please reach out to us at podcast at nfipodcast.com. New episodes released weekly or whenever I feel like it. Help us spread the show. Tell us what you think and put a buddy on. I'll see you out there. Stay safe and remember, do your job. (laughs) 